This video was compiled using information which was made public via news or government agencies and is intended to honor the lives of those who met an unimaginable fate and also bring awareness to the unjust behaviors in our communities. As the title suggests, in this video, I will be covering four matters in which the parents of the victims were charged with their heartbreaking deaths. It is devastating to know that these young souls will never get to truly experience life. Please note that no record of the conclusion of these cases has been found and individuals are considered innocent until proven guilty. I will be following the outcome of these cases, so be sure to subscribe for updates. On May 24th, 2018, officials received a 911 call in reference to an unresponsive 10-month-old girl at 9768 Nightbridge Drive in Concord, North Carolina. Deputies and emergency personnel arrived on scene and unfortunately at 9.30 a.m., Tanya Tatum was pronounced dead. A search of the home uncovered drugs including cocaine and the girl's parents, Timothy Elvin Tatum and Ashley Kiara Lee, were taken into custody. The same day, Lee was charged with misdemeanor child abuse, trafficking opium or heroin, possession of cocaine, and maintaining a dwelling to sell and deliver a controlled substance. Tatum was charged with misdemeanor child abuse, possession of cocaine, and maintaining a dwelling to sell and deliver controlled substances and simple possession of a controlled substance. Following a bail hearing, Timothy was denied a bond while Lee was granted a total secure bond in the sum of $550,000. In June 2018, investigators added felony negligent child abuse resulting in serious bodily injury to the list of charges for each defendant and Timothy had his bond set at $1 million. During the course of the investigation, further charges were filed against the parents, including possession of a firearm by a felon and possession of a firearm with an altered serial number. An autopsy and toxicology report determined that the victim's cause of death was the result of fentanyl toxicity. Following the findings, on December 19th, 2018, the couple's charges were upgraded in the death of their 10-month-old daughter, Tanya Tatum. The following day, the pair who were being held at Cabarrus County Detention Center faced a judge. Timothy was charged with second-degree murder. On May 20th, 2020, a call came into South Carolina's Chester County 911 asking for medical assistance for an unconscious child at a home on 2nd Street. When deputies and EMTs responded, they found the lifeless body of five-month-old Cassirus Gallman. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Months after Cassirus was found, authorities said the child suffered from chronic malnutrition, which resulted in his death. Medical personnel noted that his caretakers showed extreme indifference to human life by failing to provide adequate food and or health care. In August, an arrest warrant was issued for the child's mother, 21-year-old Natricia Ann Wright, and the child's father, 
22-year-old Shedrick Dashaun Gallman, who authorities said committed homicide by child abuse and or neglect from December through May 20, which accounts for the entirety of the child's life. The pair were arrested in Union County, North Carolina, later the following day. They were locked up in the Union County Jail on a charge of homicide by child abuse as they awaited an extradition hearing the following day. According to a review of the Chester County inmate records, Natricia was handed over to the Chester County Sheriff's Office on September 2nd, 2020, and a court hearing was scheduled for November 25th, 2020. Wright's bond was set at $50,000 and the 23-year-old was actually released on October 12, 2020. Her aforementioned charges were shown along with 20 years to life in parenthesis and her case was listed as pending. Shedrick's inmate information closely reflected Wright's down to the bond amount However, his release date was listed as October 15, 2020. The pair have maintained their innocence, and since their release, Shedrick has continued to celebrate Caceres' life via social media. On June 23, 2021, Atlanta police officers responded to a home on Alta View Drive after a 911 caller reported that a 13-month-old child was in distress. Saji Bana was taken to Children's Hughes Spalding Hospital, where later she passed away, making her the city's third homicide victim, younger than two years old in 2021. Following the completion of the autopsy by the Fulton Medical Examiner, in November 2021, the infant's death was ruled a homicide. Atlanta Police Department then filed arrest warrants for Brandon Bonner and Brielle James, the child's parents, and charged them with second-degree murder and child cruelty. At around 3 p.m. on February 21st, 2022, after a 911 call, deputies with the East Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office responded to Oakside Drive where they found 8-month-old Ladre Doucette unresponsive. The infant was then rushed to the hospital where unfortunately he was pronounced dead. Soon after, a family member contacted the child's parents and aided law enforcement in getting them to return to the home, at which point they were taken into custody. During their investigation, detectives learned that the baby's 28-year-old father, Ladre Doucette Sr., was verbally abusive toward the child and often used extreme profanity toward him when he cried. The boy's mother, 30-year-old Mary Williams, later told investigators that the physical abuse toward their son started in late January 2022 when his father would beat him for crying. She said she witnessed the abuse on at least eight occasions but did not intervene because she was afraid of Doucette. Williams claimed that the man would repeatedly punch the baby with a closed fist while he was laying in bed. The mother acknowledged to investigators that there were opportunities for her to report the abuse and seek medical attention for her son, yet she did not. When authorities interviewed Ladre Sr., he denied abusing his son. The man was noted to have a violent criminal history which included convictions for aggravated second-degree battery, a felon in possession of a firearm, home invasion, and simple burglary of an inhabited dwelling. 
an abrasion around the baby's eye and a mild hematoma on the back of his head were noted and then a topsy revealed trauma to the head, spine, torso and upper extremities. His ribs were fractured, lungs bruised and punctured and other organs were damaged severely. At the time of his death, baby Ladre only weighed about 8 pounds due to medical issues. The coroner ruled the baby's death a homicide. Just two days later, police officers arrested Ladre Doucette Sr. and Mary Williams and charged them each with first degree murder in the death of the eight month old. As of this video, no bond has been set for either Doucette or Williams. I would like to remind you all that no record of the conclusion of these cases has been found and individuals are considered innocent until proven guilty. Be sure to subscribe for updates. May the family and friends of Kasiris, Tanya, Saji, and Ladre Jr. find solace in the happy memories and may their souls rest in perpetual peace.